introduction from Miss Flatbed Red before we buckle in for this incredible journey told by Marcel's wife, Val. Please be prepared to pause and look at the detail. The best way to see this truck is to do so in person, but I've done my best to capture what I can in about 18 minutes, my longest tour yet. I promise you it's worth it. Watch to the end and you'll be able to see in the trailer every little handmade detail of this lifelong dream made into reality. And now over to Val, who will tell you all about Marcel's story and this incredible creation. Marcel lost his parents when he was 14. He was forced to get a living, so he lied on his age. Born and raised in Montreal area, French part of Canada, he went to the northern Canada and applied as an ice road trucker. At 14? At 14. He got the job. At 14, what? you can be the smartest, the wisest, it doesn't matter. You don't know what life is, really. And you don't know danger. When he realized that he was risking big time his life and that he could die any minute, he literally asked himself, where did I put my feet into? But I put my name in, I got the job, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. He always been this way. He doesn't do nothing halfway, he respects his word. So he committed, he did it. But he said he was thinking that's all you can do. You're you're so many hours on ice lakes. That's the only thing you have on your hand. You're lonely, so you think all the time. And he says, if I get out of here alive, one day I want to build myself a truck. Blue cowboy theme horses. You know, he didn't. He had the main idea, mm -hmm. no details, but the main idea, and he. That kept him not distracted, but yeah. hoping, yes. you know, you don't drown in your sorrow and stuff like that. So he did the ice road for five years. Got really close many times, of course, of, of losing his life. He saw other drivers or heard about it, you know, that lost their lives. So at 19 years old, no more ice road. Long story short, in Canada, and I don't know if it's the same thing here back in those days, in the early 70s, but when you were not 21, you couldn't get a bank account, account other than if one of your parents was signing for it. Since he couldn't get a bank account, he was cashing his paycheck and was tashing. You know, he was just piling and he bought food because he was like six months on the ice, two, three weeks out, six months. So he was just piling there was nothing for him to spend other than food to live at one point you know he, he had so much money he says well on his two three weeks out of the ice he went back to his um, hometown it was a little town and he bought a piece of property I can not remember how many acres two three five some ten something like that so he bought a piece of property went back on the ice and back and forth like that for five years when he was coming back to his hometown he was running around and uh, buying cars car parts pickups running not running it didn't matter that's where he put his money instead of having cash he was buying vehicles uh, so he was collecting and so the piece of land got filled with five years of all those vehicles and parts and stuff so when he he decided to just quit on the ice he sold the piece of property as a salvage yard he kept a few cars and he collected enough money to buy five trucks and five trailers so he registered he started his own company at 19 years old he hired four drivers he sat in one of the trucks and he was dispatching all four plus him from the truck that was his home. Being born in Canada, at that part of Canada, that province, it's speaking, uh, French speaking only. No a word in, in English. We were not taught English other than yes, no toaster. <laughs> he didn't speak a word in English, didn't understand it, but he decided to do United States, Canada. So he started to do that, dispatch the four other trucks. So that was the start. He had a hard, hard start on the ice, 
but that's what made him who he is today. I can't imagine doing that myself, even today, at my age. I wouldn't have, I'm sorry, but the spine neither the balls to do it. I know you'll edit that part. <laughs> and at 14, he, he had the character. He mm -hmm. was, he always been determined, mm -hmm. perseverance, he had that. He's a one of a kind. How old is he now? He is 62 now, uh, 63, I'm sorry. 50 years next year of driving. Yes. He always been independent because of that, I guess. He was looking further and he wanted to get a better life, but he never got help, right? He was all by himself. So he promised one thing, the truck of his dream, if he get out of there, out of there alive. And the second thing, I've had a hard start. It's been tough. I risked my life, feared, scared, and it's been tough. If I get out of here alive and one day I'm fortunate enough to get a good living and be at ease financially, he says, I'm going to help whoever needs help because it's tough to go through life. I'm tearing up listening to this. <laughs> so that's what he promised himself. And to this day, I can tell you that we still do it. His dream and his promises, we still respect it. In, in our community, we put together car shows. All the proceeds go to schools, kids, veterans. In Nevada. In Nevada. There's people that we don't even know that we hear from whoever, employees or friends. Well, they got something bad happened to them. They can feed their family. So what we do is, or, you know, whatever they need. We gave households, groceries. We gave all kinds of stuff to help. And most of that is without them knowing who we were or who gave it to them. We don't care about recognition. We, we do it because we can do it. Even if we couldn't do it, we would do anything to try to do it. Even though we're born in Canada and we live in the United States, which is our home, we're all human. For us, there's no borders. We're all different skin colors, different nationalities, and we don't care. At first, human beings, we all have blood through our veins. Somebody needs help, we, we try to do what we can do for them. And that's what he promised himself. How did you meet him? Years and years ago, we were not even living in the same city, but fairly close, maybe an hour and a half. I've been working in the trucking industry too, on my side, not in the truck. I've never been a driver, never will be it's not meant for me but i was on the dispatch side and office side he purchased the company i was working for i didn't want to commute i didn't want to move again because i was in my hometown and uh, just came back to my hometown he was doing a meeting on a saturday morning for the two teams to meet and him to meet the new crew let's say and i decided not to go and i can't remember who told me hey val nothing to lose it's an hour and a half drive just go meet the guy and see his crew and you never know so i said oh what the heck so i drove an hour and a half and i went to the meeting and the very first second that we saw each other it's just like we recognized each other he he came to me and he says you must be valerie because i was the only woman working in that company he says you must be valerie i said yes He says, I'm Marcel. I said, well, nice to meet you, Marcel. He says, are you going to come to work with us? I said, absolutely. Shook your hand. And I said, what did I do? <laughs> He just sweet talked to you on the spot. <laughs> so I committed. I didn't know why. It, you know, without even thinking. From that day, I mean, we stick together. We're like... Still to this day, we're like the two little birds that can't separate. We do everything together. When he goes on the road, I ride with him. It's 24-7. It works really well this way. We're still teenagers together. It's, it's a dream. How long ago was this big project? Started. Started, yeah. Um, when he bought the truck, it's a 1989. He bought it new. He started customizing it little by little. And it took time and years to do it this way, but it changed over time. Even uh, five years ago, it was not the same year old. You know, he improves, he got 
other ideas, mainly in the middle of the night where her Valerie, Valerie wake up. I got an idea and he wanted to talk about it. But uh, it took, I could say that it could some 30 something years because to make it look like that because he keeps adding or changing and modifying so the end result is 30 something years later wow but he started day one you know change the color and do this we used to have a little stagecoach bench and with the bows covered bows on the back of the cab it it lasted so long we got tired of it it's you know so it changed we used to have uh, wood in the wheels like wagon wheels um, and then it changed again mostly about dot and stuff so it it looked different 10 15 20 25 years ago than now and i'm sure that in 10 years from now it will look different from the good, the bad, the ugly inside. Yeah, he gonna take you around, Miss Fat Day. Awesome. So, this is a working truck, sir. You'll see a few scratches. They, they haul the load here from uh, Nevada to Iowa or to Salt Lake, and then from Salt Lake to Wisconsin, they came here. At this point, as I walk through the trailer to keep this video from getting flagged, let's all pretend that we're listening to the music from the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm not very good at whistling, so you're gonna have to do it on your own or just listen to it in your imagination. I want to add a little note here also while we walk through. Val and Marcel, both being from Canada, are not all that into guns, so as he was developing his idea for this new look and this ever-changing look for this truck and trailer, Marcel asked a friend of theirs if he would collect shells and casings next time he went to the shooting range. So while their friend was shooting 180 rounds or something like that his wife was running around and collecting all the shells he, they passed along the shells to val and marcel and that's what you see now on all the nut covers and in some other little details on the truck and trailer that's all you get from me keep that imagination going because there's still more to see The models of trucks built into this one are actual existing rigs within the fleet. There are currently 22 of them, each with their own murals. And if you look behind this, we'll see in a second, this wood is hand carved. I can't emphasize enough just how amazing every little detail in this work of art is. One of Marcel's employees made sure that I didn't miss out on things, but I'm sure I did. So I hope you get to see it in person for yourself. There's still more to see, so don't stop yet. This is a son. Sean. Painted also. Yeah, his daughter's on the other side. Oh my And that's landing gear. Yeah, it's, but they made it look like a piston. It lights up at night. And it's a little lantern.
these are all miniatures of actual cars he has in a collection. They're not just, you know, Matchbox cars. He had them all made to represent cars that he has in a collection at home. Oh, here we have, you've seen this maybe. All trucks that are on the, currently on the road. This is a picture of a the truck pull contest back in Canada, right? The painting is of that. He used to uh, do the truck shows in Canada with a competition they had for pulling heavy loads and stuff. He holds the record for uh, triple trailer backup. But check this out. Generation <laughs> right to the stairwell. Yeah, he's opening the hood right now. Fire. I don't know if anybody's inside. Anybody in there? 